Well, six weeks into the counteroffensive in Ukraine, we reported yesterday that there has been an average of about 4,300 deaths of Ukrainian soldiers since this began for a total ground gained of less than 50 square miles. Uh, Russia says that at least 26,000 Ukrainian servicemen have lost their lives since this began. Uh, we have independent journalist with us, Mike Jones. He has been looking into the conditions of Ukrainian soldiers. What is their morale? What is the prospect for these innocent lives? Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So now you live in Russia, but you spend a lot of time taking trips to the Donbass region. You have for months and months. Uh, so what can you tell us about the general state of um, how would I describe this uh, state of uh, you call it psychologically crushing uh, the the morale of the army? Absolutely. These are obviously very tough conditions for both sides. And psychologically speaking, it's always going to be very taxing. But when it comes to the reports that I've been supplied by sources in the Ukrainian law enforcement agencies that are seemingly sympathetic to the Russian cause and want to clearly oust the Kiev regime, you get a good idea of uh, just quite how terrible things are on the Ukrainian side. Now, I've, I've said that things are difficult on both sides, but you have a very different mentality. So the people, particularly from Donbass, if I'll focus on them for just one moment, the people I've spoken to directly, they have this uh, additional layer where they are literally fighting for their homes, particularly if it's Donetsk, the soldiers from there are literally trying to protect their families. This is a level of motivation that can't just be instilled in someone through instruction or training. And I'll read from the document where it states the current state of affairs in the unit leads to the lowest possible effectiveness of performance of tasks as intended, which may lead to negative consequences, loss of the defense lines, and complete loss of the combat capability. And many of your viewers watching will no doubt have seen videos circulating, particularly on Telegram, of these poor soldiers being rounded up off the streets put in the back of vans and sent straight to the front lines. They even have an officer who is responsible for what is called moral and psychological support. And in his own estimations in there, uh, the one of these down to just 20% of moral qualities and combat capability. I mean, this just shines a light on the fact that these soldiers were never ready for a combat like this. Most of them, can you speak to the fact that they're untrained for this. Absolutely. As we've said, many of them are picked up off the street, uh, even some from camping sites, beaches in Odessa. Uh, these people are not uh, equipped or trained to deal with what is the horror of an artillery war, which, of course, it appears the US is losing by resorting to cluster ammunition. But in particularly this case, many of those who have surrendered uh, and this document doesn't necessarily cover those who have surrendered, just those who voluntarily left their posts. Uh, they are claiming they feel that they are being treated by their commanders as simply cannon fodder. Yes, and we saw a lot of crossover. I think it speaks to the fact that Ukrainians and Russians are so, um, you know, there's this close bond between the nationalities. Uh, during the annexation of Crimea, I think it was something like 80% of the Ukrainian military that was stationed in Crimea voluntarily then just went and said, okay, then I will join the Russian military because that seems to be where the wind is blowing. Uh, those that didn't felt like they had some loyalty to their oath to Kiev, uh, but then it was pointed out that that oath was to a president who was already ousted. Um, and so it doesn't seem, I, th I guess we're not told how easy it is for them to understand um, you know, one government towards the other. It's not like a big leap. It's not a traitorous thing, right? Is, is that a correct assessment? Uh, I, th I think it would be would be the case for your everyday normal guy. And let's face it, not all of them are the far right ideology. In fact, that's most likely the minority. Uh, and they are placed particularly uh, in the battalions responsible for discipline, i.e. not one step back. So most everyday uh, individuals are not that um, that 
ideology, ideologically um, subscribed to or wish to die for even the aspirations of the Kiev regime. And we see even now in Vilnius with NATO, you know, do, do the people of Ukraine really want to join NATO? Uh, is it just Zelensky? Because even NATO itself agrees that it's not beneficial for Ukraine. And we're, we're seeing the Ukrainian people pay with their blood as America fights to the last Ukrainian. And so we have seen on social media that the Russian army has been dropping flyers with instructions for any Ukrainians that want to uh, surrender. Um, do you have you seen evidence of that going well for them, that they are allowed a peaceful surrender and then they are treated uh, in in uh, coordination with uh, human rights laws? Yeah, I, I have uh, the leaflets. One example I saw was they printed sort of fake hryvnias, the local currency, and on there, obviously to attract the attention, on there were the contact details and the radio frequencies in order to contact the Russian units. I've seen at least three cases of these units then taking up this offer, meeting at a specified rendezvous, and then giving interviews to camera explaining why they were prompted to surrender and uh, you know what enabled them to do it and again why are you fighting now at this point nine times out of ten it was i was forced to yeah they don't really know what they're fighting for or they don't want to i mean who would want to um, and we saw just recently an article in Der Spiegel, which was following Ukrainian soldiers. And this also showed that they were dispirited and considering ways to give up and surrender instead of giving up in the heat of battle. So it's becoming increasingly hard for the West to paint this picture of like scrappy, motivated Ukraine. Uh, we're being able to see now that it's in fact the opposite. It's, um, yeah, it's lack of respect for human life. Ukraine. Uh, that's what this battle yeah, represents. Yeah, certainly on the part of the West, um, shoveling these men to the front. And it's not to be disrespectful to the Ukrainian servicemen. Uh, they have fought uh, heroically, uh, you know, and with tenacity and this, and they've, they've done a very good job. So it's not to the, be uh, disdainful of these servicemen, but those who see the reality and understand that their lives are being thrown away to what? For Biden's 2024 election? so right. that he can look good. Yeah. It's really not of benefit to the everyday Ukrainian uh, individual or, or person. They're seeing their country collapse around them and their economy with it, of course. Now, these documents that you have, um, what do you think will come of them? So it's worth noting that these documents are dated from around April 16th to April 20th. And as dire as the picture that they paint is, given the time that's passed, I think it's fair to speculate that things are very much worse at this point in time. Especially given the fact that we have these death toll numbers now, which are higher than a normal six week period due to the counter offensive. So thank you so much for bringing us this report on uh, exactly what this means for people being dragged into this. This is a, a war of governments that's costing real civilian lives. Um, so we look forward to you bringing us more uh, about the actual conflict in Ukraine. Thank you so much. And uh, where can we find these documents if we want to follow them? Uh, these documents are posted at t.me forward slash I Earl Grey TV. And there will be a link to a Telegraph uh, article website where I've included not just the English translation, but also the source material for anyone who may be watching that's uh, fluent. Uh, in Ukrainian language to just verify for themselves the accuracy of the translation and the details held within. And yeah. I, I look forward to bringing you more reports in the future. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Good to see you as always. All right. Uh, so let us know what you think of that in the comments below and like and share this segment if you'd like to, uh, to let people know what the real human cost is of uh, this war and it's uh, it's just awful. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.